Esther. This whole thing will happen to her only because of a of Haman and a crisis. Problem. If it wasn't for Haman, this never would happen. She never would have come out of the closet. Mordecai would never be exalted. Other people would never be, have been, gotten saved and converted, as it says at the end of the book. So God's purposes, you know, we look at problems and we look at crises and we hate them, but God's purposes are often accomplished through those things. In fact, those are the things which often accomplish the change that God is wanting for our life. Most of us did not get saved except for problems or crisis or something. Most of us. God fulfills his purposes through those things. Look at God's people, Moses. Moses, the calling on Moses' life would not have been fulfilled. It could not be fulfilled without Pharaoh and without slave, without the bondage. That's how it happened. Look at David. David could never become king and never fulfill it without Goliath. So you, we despise our problems, and God says, I am anointing your problems to bring you into, I'm anointing it to bring about change in your life, to bring about what I need to bring, because when everything's going regular, when everything's going fine, you probably are not going to change. Human nature is, I'd rather not have change. God is saying, I have to allow this so I can accomplish the destiny I have for you. We have the word, we hate crises. We don't want a crisis, but you know the word crisis is a Greek. It's in the New Testament. And when it appears in the New Testament, the crisis doesn't mean crisis. It means decision. When you have a crisis, don't panic. Say, Lord, what are you, what are you trying to accomplish? Things are not out of control. Things are not, are not out, not with God. They're not. So, Lord, there is a way, there is something through this. Just as much as if he, he blessed you with a calling today, he gave you a word. The, the, the crisis has a purpose to it. And instead of, instead of fearing it and hating it, Lord, what do you want to accomplish? This will accomplish it just like some, a blessing would. So it would be a blessing. In fact, they'll probably accomplish it a lot faster. So, Lord, what is your purpose in this crisis? What do you want to do? What's the good thing? And what is my, what is, what is my, remember crisis means decision in Greek. What is my decision? The crisis is there that you make a decision. Just like Esther had to make a decision in her crisis and that would lead to her destiny. So the same time God said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to commit? What do you want me to, co- what do you want me to change? What do you want me to, to, to commit to you and to decide once and for all for you? So in your life. The word goral, I said, one of the words for lots means, not only destiny, means, again, inheritance. What it's like is if something is waiting to be inherited, but you can't always see it until the time. All these things, by the end of the book, it all comes, all the inheritance has come. You can't see it, but, got your, but until the time, but your, your life is to inherit. You are to inherit a mantle. God has something for you. If you're a believer, God has a calling. And you need to inherit that calling. And there's a way to do it. Now the word for, interesting, the word for Purim, the the lots of the book of Esther, the Purim, the Purim, interesting, literally means the broken pieces. Esther has had a life of broken pieces. Broken in exile, broken by the death of her mother and father. Broken, brought up in a foreign land in in a house by a relative, and yet God, through all the broken pieces of Esther's life, God brings together the destiny appointed. Not despite the brokenness, because of it. God uses that in your, God uses brokenness in your life. God uses it because brokenness is another sign of change. Something. God sometimes has to break things in your life in order to then, they become the lots, they become the destiny. that They're cast to bring about his purposes. Not to fear even brokenness. God will use brokenness. You may have had a life filled with brokenness. Or even in the Lord, broken things, broken ministries, broken relationships. God will use them and recast them, the lots, for destiny. Know that there is a plan. There is a destiny. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11, of course, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for Shalom, for fullness, for wellness, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Now, who did he speak that to? He spoke it to the exiles, those who had been scattered to Babylon. 
and would come back, and that includes Esther and Mordecai later on and become Persia. I know the plans. Even in Persia, I still have plans. The word in Hebrew for the I know the plan, the plans that God has for you, the word in Hebrew is Mahashaba. Try it quick. Very good. Mahashaba. You know what it means? It means literally, this is not hype, this is not preacher. This is real. It literally means the intricately woven, the 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 intricately crafted plans. Into God has plans for you, not just general, specific. Intricately woven, intricately crafted, just as with Esther. But Esther had to say yes. Esther had to fulfill it. Esther had to rise to those plans. The grace of God's calling on Esther. Esther had hidden who she was. She had hidden, therefore, her observance of the covenant. You know, as a Jewish person, she has to, she has to follow the law. She had to either not do it or hide it. She hid her relationship with God. A lot of times, and some of you may be hiding things, the thing is that when you hide these things, when you don't live all, what happens is you're slowing down or you're impeding what God has for you. I'll give you, you know, some of you, many of you, are hiding the gospel from those who need to be saved. You know, instead of opening your mouth in that store, instead of sharing a word to the cashier or whoever, your coworkers, you're hiding it. Why, well, like Esther, because what if I, what if I do it? What if I get rejected? What if I cause a problem? What if I, and you're hiding, and you know what happens? What happens is nothing happens. The purposes of God are waiting to happen when you stop hiding. Share the word, and they can get saved. Or, they'll, or in the worst case scenario, they, they reject you and you leap for joy because the Bible says great is your reward. But God's purposes are happening, will happen, not only for their life in some way, but for your life when you stop hiding God. To find out how you can receive more of Jonathan's teachings, to receive special free gifts or get in touch, go to hopeoftheworld.org or call toll-free 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821. You can also get more at Jonathan Kahn's Facebook page or write us direct at Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Hope of the World is dedicated to the goal of spreading God's word and salvation to every land and people. We do this by spreading the word throughout the world and sponsoring compassion projects to the most poor and needy around the earth. To get in touch or have a part in God's work, just write to Hope of the World, Box 1111, Lodi, New Jersey, 07644, USA. Or go to hopeoftheworld.org or call 1-800-YESHUA-1. That's 1-800-937-4821.